Hey folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to the Let's Play The Final Fantasy Legend. I'm in a weird mood today, and I don't feel like playing any of our normal games, and I'm feeling kind of nostalgic, so I'm playing what I consider to be the greatest Game Boy game of all time. It's the reason I own a Game Boy. Uh, this hit the North American market in late 1990, I was about 11 years old then, and a cousin of mine had grabbed a Game Boy and had grabbed this game, and I had, I played it on his Game Boy, and it just, it this blew my mind. It's a JRPG I'd never experienced a proper, like, a, a role-playing game like that on a console before, um, because I don't think I'd played Final Fantasy on the NES yet. Now, this has nothing to do with Final Fantasy at all. Its proper name is, hold on, I got the wiki page up here somewhere, it's Makai Tushi Saga. It's part of a whole saga franchise. So even though there's a Final Fantasy Legend 1, 2, and 3, um, there, it's part properly of a different franchise, uh, which actually continues yet to today. And in fact, uh, some of these Final Fantasy Legend games have been remade for more modern um, versions of the Game Boy or Nintendo DS, including some, you know, color and 3D graphics. But I'm going to be playing the original one, the one I grew up with. I still have this cart. I don't have a functional Game Boy anymore, but I still have this cartridge. And in fact, I have one, two, and three. I can't, I can't, my memories of three are, are fuzzy. I'm sure I played it. I'm sure I must have beat it. But what I really remember a lot is the first one and the second one. So, um... This video, I'm only going to be putting up this first episode if I've actually finished this game. Luckily, it's actually a relatively short game to play through. Uh, it was designed to be playable in, during the time of a single uh, flight, I think, across the Pacific or something like that. So it's, like, beatable in, like, eight-ish hours or so. Uh, it might be a little slower depending on how much talking I do, but it also might be faster because, in theory, I should know what I am doing. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. We're not going to... Um, we're not going to re-talk necessarily every NPC, but I'll try to actually do a good amount to get some of the story in there. So... It has been said that the tower at the center of the world is connected to paradise. Dreaming of a life in paradise, many have challenged the secret of the tower, but no one knows what became of them. Now there is another who will brave adventure. And we have to pick who our main character will be. There are, it looks like eight different kind of types of characters. Really, there's three types of characters. There are humans, there are mutants, and there is a monster class, which is really interesting. And in fact, um, well, this... I don't know if this is it. The, people credit Final Fantasy Legend, actually, with introducing a lot of mechanics that would later become really popular in Pokemon much later. Um, and I don't think the monster evolution is really one of those things. I think it actually is more has to do with the look and the movement of the game. But still, it is really interesting that as a character class, you can be a monster. And what the big deal with the monsters is they develop by when you kill another monster in combat, you can sometimes they'll drop meat. And if you eat that, your character might mutate into a different kind of monster. Uh, according some actually really weird and complex rules. The other thing that's really interesting here is there's no level system in this game um, at all. All your characters have are statistics, and what's also interesting is your human characters never improve on their own. The only way you can improve human characters is by feeding them potions, which improve their statistics. Mutants, on their, the other hand, uh, can't drink the potions to improve their statistics, but instead, their statistics improve, there's a chance to improve at the end of every fight, and it is apparently weighted based on the actions that you take, which is going to affect, actually, how we start off over here. Now, if we do, we are going to pick a human female as our main character, and I'll explain why that's going to happen once we come in. In fact, we're going to be running uh, one human female, two mutant females, and then a monster. Monsters are not that powerful, but they're interesting, so I figured I'd show them off. Um, we are limited to four characters for our character name, so while I normally pick random subscribers to name our characters after, this time around they're being named based on length of username, and as such, I've already named my party over here, we have our group, we have our main character Wake, our human female, then we have Khan and Ice, our mutant females, followed by Eero, our monster, who I started off as a goblin. The choice of starting monsters is different between your main character and your extra guild members. Which, by the way, so this is where you start. Actually, you start, if this guard wasn't in my way, you start, like, right here. And anyway, you move up here, there's an inn, inns are how you heal, but more importantly, over here there's a guild, which is where you can recruit new characters. So I grabbed the extra three characters. There is permadeath in this game. Um, it's a little bit unusual. Over here, your characters, you see on this character sheet, they've got three hearts. Every time someone dies in combat, they lose a heart. Resurrecting them is actually quite cheap, but if they run out of hearts, they can no longer be resurrected. Although, it is possible to acquire additional hearts later on. But, we're going to go and try to see if we can avoid any deaths whatsoever. So, your main character has to stick around. That's going to be Wake. The others are technically replaceable. But, of course, you can reset a lot of your progression that way, and that's really unhappy-making. 
So, why did we go with this all-female party except for our monsters? Well, the big, the only difference between a male and a female character in the game is the fact that females start with slightly higher agility and males start with a slightly higher strength. There are weapons that deal damage based on agility. There are weapons that deal damage based on strength. Agility is also important for your, your chance to hit in combat. As such, it's really helpful early on if you can focus on agility, char uh, agility characters and just buff agility as much as possible to get maximum damage as well as maximum chance to hit. And then later on with our human, we'll just develop her strength over here, wake strength, uh, so the, and switch her over to strength-based weapons. That way we can probably keep using mostly um, agility-based weapons on our mutants, who will also be very powerful spellcasters. Now, the other big reason for picking a human female as your main character is your main character starts with more hit points. So humans start with 40 hit points, mutants start with 20. Your main character always starts with 20 bonus hit points. In addition to that, your main character also starts with a better than normal weapon. You can see here, our other characters started with rapiers, or two mutants start with rap rapiers, which are agility-based weapons, whereas Wake started with a saber, which is an agility-based weapon that does a lot more more damage. It's actually an Act 2 weapon. But, and while it can be used to do a lot of extra damage now, one of the really important things you can do with it is actually sell it right away, assuming you remember to de-equip it. So let's go and just get rid of that right over there. You also notice that Wake started with a bronze um, gauntlet, which I'm going to move down to that slot over there based on my organization system. So by doing this, I can sell this saber for half of its value, so it's worth 2,000 gold. This is a ton of money for Act 1. So we are nerfing our, our damage output a little bit too much. You can see our rapier is only worth 24 gold pieces. And honestly, it's gonna do not dissimilar damage early on because um, damage scales, the damage of your weapon is basically like a multiplier to your stats and our stats are so low right now that it's not gonna matter that much. And what we're gonna do is use some of this fun to buy a couple of suits of golden armor and a couple of golden gauntlets as well. And this is gonna give us a lot more defense and basically make our main character kind of unkillable here. So Wake, we are gonna go and make sure to give you, we'll give you a couple of rapiers. Notice that the uh, the rapiers do have, or all weapons actually have usage limits. So after you attack 50 times with rapier, it is destroyed and you can no longer use it. You can't repair it, well, Mo let's just say you can't repair these. Um, and so you eventually use up your weapons. Um, there are your mutant abilities, you, which you can get like spells, they will regenerate when you rest at an inn, as well as your monster abilities as well. But the, um, um, the weapons, as a general rule, never replenish themselves. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and we're going to keep a couple of extra rapiers in the tank. Actually, I put the bronze gauntlets in the wrong place. I like to organize my armor where the bottom slot is your breastplate, your middle slot, or your second from the bottom is a helmet, and your third from the bottom is your um, is your gauntlet. So that only leaves one equipment slot for your mutants. We'll see what the rest of the slots end up with. And uh, monsters can never carry any equipment whatsoever. They just have their own attacks, which again, regenerate when you rest. So we'll go and save that. Actually, in this emulator, I'm not sure how dependable that is. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save the state over here. All right, we're gonna pop out into town. I didn't look at the Pokemon shop. We're gonna look at that later on. So now that I'm into overworld, I can get encounters very, you know, very sort of Pokemon-y kind of style. And just like that, random encounters or, you know, Final Fantasy as well. So we've got a lizard over here, a singular lizard. We're gonna choose to fight and we're gonna attack it with the rapiers over here and get everyone a little bit of that. And Eero over here is just gonna scratch with nails. So Wake's gonna attack the lizard, do six damage. Should do somewhat better damage than the mutants because Wake started with eight agility as opposed to seven agility. But there is a lot of random range over here. Actually, that turned out to be a big difference in damage. And you can see the lizard did zero damage when it attacked, and that's thanks to the gold armor, which is gonna make a big difference to the early game. Certainly killing things faster also makes a big difference, but, um, but not taking damage means that you don't have to rest as often, you don't have to spend as much money at the end, and armor never takes damage, never wears out, so that's nice. So it's gonna take us a few rounds to beat up this lizard, and there we go. Defeated, wake one, we got 40 gold pieces. This always gives credit to the lead character. Um, I set the speed okay, and if we take a look at our stats just to see if our mutants have evolved, and I think, I don't know if they have. Sometimes you get passive defense, there could be different things, we'll see how it goes. Oh, and by the way, that position shows you what floor of the tower we're on. We're currently on the first floor, and the highest we've reached is the first floor. So we're gonna move down here to this next town. We don't really have much to do there. I don't know if the, um, 
the chance to get a fight actually changes depending on the terrain, depends on the terrain, like if I'm in the plains versus the forest. I don't know if it's more frequent, I don't know if the type of monsters change up, or anything of the sort. Um, there we go. Oh, we found some goblin meat, which means I need to make sure I have... So, there's some great at this point, which I wish, you know, these things you wish you had growing up. Um, these great charts of how the evolutions works. People have figured out, and, you know, made game facts from them, and that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, describe the mechanics for how these evolutions happen. Now, the charts are fine, but they take a little bit of work to keep cross-referencing. So, I actually made a little uh, web app. Uh, little JavaScript applet to let me know what evolution I'll get if I eat various types of meat. So here, actually, this is a goblin. I'm already a goblin, or Eero is already a goblin, so eating it doesn't do anything. Sometimes eating meat of the same type still does something, but it's a little bit unusual. So there's another town there we're going to visit just to advance the story. Um, zombies tend to have a fair amount of hit points. But apparently their defenses are a little bit lower. Like, uh, that's the, one of the things. The lizard is actually pretty high on defense, so... It can be a little demoralizing to hit. There's, I talked about how there's melee weapons and there's, um, or sorry, how there's strength weapons and agility weapons. There's actually a third class of weapons, which is uh, ranged weapons, and they're a little bit different. So if we need to heal, I think we may have taken a little bit of damage here. We can go to the inn. There we go. One gold per hit point. Um, there's ranged weapons which use agility to hit and actually are more susceptible to miss, but do fixed damage. So there's a statue in the middle of the town. Apparently something is missing from the statue. If we went into the pub, and you can talk to all these people. Hello, each king seeks the treasure of the others to become king of the world. So there's some exposition here. Castle Shield is nearby. If we go into the pub here, we can find out more information. But basically here in the world of continent, there are three kings. Uh, king of sword, king of shield, and king of armor. And they're sort of competing with each other. So we're going to be visiting those soon. You also see this punch-type weapon over here. You'll, you'll see things like punch and kick and a few others. These are martial arts moves. They're kind of stupid. Their damage is not based on stats. Their damage is based on how few charges you have left. You'll suck at punch at first. When the punch usage get really low, then they're going to do a lot of damage. But again, eventually they wear out. So what's the point? Uh, it's kind of dumb and derpy. We're not going to bother with bronze um, armor over here. We're actually not going to bother with any of this stuff. I just wanted to show it off. Um, and I don't remember if the potion shop here sells potions I could demonstrate. Okay, they do. So, this is how you level up your, um, your human characters. So, some of these are just, like, heal potions for between fights, for example. But this will give your human character up to 20 hit points, um, when consumed. So, it's a random number. I don't know if it's truly 1 to 20. It may be. I think the lowest I've ever seen is, like, 5 hit points gained from that. Uh, but 20 is definitely the max. And this will, if you've already hit 200 max hit points, instead of giving you 1 to 20 hit points, it'll always just give you one hit point over there. That's why it's HP 200. Later on, we'll find HP 400 and HP 600 potions that work exactly the same, but have a higher cap. And then here, these potions increase your strength and your agility by, I believe, two points each. Yeah, two points each. Again, only for humans. So we'll be doing a lot of that potion drinking later on. So for now, we're going to go ahead and leave over here. I think I would prefer a little bit more gear before we started to work super hard. So I'm actually going to visit, I'm going to bypass that castle there because they've got nothing to do for us right now. We just It's just a cranky king who says, go away. Uh, that's the king of shield. But over here, we've got a nice king. Uh, we actually, there's nothing to do here. You could totally skip this um, this castle completely. And say hi to the guards. Welcome, friend. The king would like to speak to you on the second floor. So I'm just going to do it for story development. Even though there's no fights, there's no XP, there's, there's literally no point in doing this. But it's kind of nice to see, so I'm going to do that. And I took a wrong turn here. Ooh, this would be a bad speed run. Got to save those frames. And again, this, talking to the king, completely optional. But some of you guys might care about the storyline. There we go. Hello, king. How's it going? My lord, you look ill. What is wrong? I am in love. Oh, who's the lady? She's a girl who lives in the south, but she wouldn't accept my proposal. I see. I may be able to have you for a reward. I'll give you anything uh, you want. All right. Good. Well, we're here for your... What are you, king armor? So we're here for your armor. Because it's one of the three things that the statue is missing. We don't know why we're completing, you know, the Statue of Hero, but it's an RPG, so therefore we have to go and, and do things just because. Alright, so now we're back in the overworld, we should get more fights, and we really do want to do that. We need to level up our mutants, we need to get some more money so that we can finish gearing up here. We're going to go to the next town so we can get some a golden helmet probably, there we go. Zombie. Try to speed through this again. They seem to have very low defense, but higher hit points. I actually don't know what the stats are. I'm sure there's probably a fact somewhere that's got all the stats for everything analyzed, but we should mostly be okay here. The rapier, and some more. Yeah, the, the monster's actually doing pretty well for us here. So I'm defeated, no meat dropped. Even skeletons can drop meat, even though that doesn't really make any sense. Oh, shoot. 
I went through there and I used a mutant ability. So one of our mutants developed the stench ability, uh, which when used on a monster, or rather a stack of monsters, lowers their strength by one, which is actually quite potent in reducing their damage. But you can see here, Ice has developed the stench ability. Congratulations, uh, Ice. And the fact that Stench is here, I think means that she's got a passive ability right here, which we can't see in combat, but we can check on the character sheet later on. But we just want to keep whacking away with the rapier. And again, um, it seems like the stat development is, weight is weighted based on what you do, so if we keep doing um, attacks with agility-based weapons, it should advance our agility. In fact, until we get a lot more money later on, the mutants will develop their agility a lot more than the human, and will end up doing a lot more damage. So we'll heal a little bit here. We can talk to some people. Yeah, it's something about bandits in a cave to the west. There's a girl in the back who's very special. All right. Good. Good to know. So this is an item vendor over here. We don't need any uh, much in the way of equipment. We could buy some helmets. These are spells that you can use. Um, they do run out, but they're quite powerful. Mutants will develop those spells uh, quite naturally, so we're just going to hold off on that for now. Uh, I'm tempted to actually... I'm just going to go ahead and get an HP potion for my human. In fact, let's go ahead and get two. Uh, just to get that started. Now, if you really want to do this well, what you're going to do is you're going to want to save right before you use this, and then reload if you're unhappy with the amount of hit points you get. But, ooh, actually, really good roll at 18 there. And 12 ain't bad. So, again, you'd often want to min-max that, but we're not going to go and do that. I'm going to save here, though, just in case we do get any problems overall. I don't want to have to re reload from too far away. And Eero says, I've heard about you. Why did you turn the king down? Uh, the girl says, bandits threatened to destroy the village, unless I accept his proposal. All right, so... That, this is the um, the place where you can go and res people. It only costs 100 golds to return someone from death, but you can only do it three times. Unless you've got 10,000 gold to buy another heart. So we're going to go into the bandit cave over here. Actually, I really don't want to fight the bandit itself. So probably what we'll do is actually fight a wee bit. Again, hope to get our uh, mutants to develop a little bit. We need a few more hit points, and better stats and agility would certainly be good. You can see uh, the damage of our mutants seems to have gone up. We can take a look at their stats, actually. And see how they're doing. Khan's got more base hit points here. Note, when you get more base hit points, it doesn't change your um, your, your current hit points. Uh, strength has gone up quite a bit. Agility hasn't moved, but Khan's strength has developed, so I don't know. Maybe it doesn't really matter what you use. Uh, here, Ice's agility has gone up quite a bit at a 12, and I think the strength started at 4, so it's gone up a wee bit as well. No hit points yet, but does have the stench ability. And, uh, yeah, no passive ability there, which is interesting. Can't use that here. So, I'm going to... Yeah, I'm not going to enter the cave yet. It would also be quite nice if we could start the evolution train on our uh, on our little monster. And in particular, that albatross that we got would actually be quite nice, because I think one of the ideal ways to level up your your monster early in the game is actually uh, through... It involves some early albatross meat. Albatross and zombie. I don't remember in what order. Oops. No, don't use stench. Do that instead. Yeah, so, so far, I mean, I guess it's because we haven't gotten that many fights, and I forget the pacing's a little different here when, I, when I'm talking, but it feels like um, we haven't gotten as much stuff here. I may want to go and invest in a little bit of bronze armor for, like, just a bronze breastplate for my final character here, or, actually, we could go all the way back to the first place, fighting along the way, and get a gold breastplate, which would be really handy to make our people more survival. I think the mutants can uh, actually develop... Um, a boost to their um, to their defense as well, even without armor. Oh, found meat of zombies. So I think that might be what we're looking for early on. So perfect. I'm currently a goblin. If I eat the meat of a zombie, I will develop into an obake, which is some sort of ghost apparently. But it's very optimal because of a couple of different reasons. The obake is actually qualified. So there's sort of there's a sort of a weird mechanic that's sort of like a level system for the monsters. Um, I mean, some monsters are definitely more powerful than others. How much money do I have? Not enough. Uh, some monsters are definitely more powerful than others. And um, so you want to develop your monster in that direction. Now, the level of the meat that you eat does affect the the level of the monster that you become in various ways. So as you progress through the game, if you just ate meat at random, eventually you would get more powerful. But, this and I think that's exactly what we want for the next... Ooh, or, again, it could be... No, we don't want to eat this. Oh, no, hold on, I have that set wrong on my little program. This would turn me into P-Frog, which is kind of interesting. It's not the fastest, most optimal path, though. Um, so I'm just going to cancel for now. I'm going to stay being a skeleton at this time. P-Frog would be a poison frog. And they have limited character space. Riding poison is too long. So I'll do a couple more rounds over here. 
And yeah, I think what I want next is an Albatross, which I think will turn me into an Oni. Which is one of those more optimal paths. I can't remember, I read the game fact, like, not that long ago, probably, but... I don't remember, like, you know, this is not one of those things that developed. Having having the program is going to be quite helpful. Um, but if you really... It's a, more, much more important if you're playing a, like, one character game just as a monster, then you really need to optimize it. And actually, I'm not even sure that's possible. Yeah, we should be able to beat these guys up. We're just mostly trying to get some extra stats for our mutants. We see we've got another mutant at 33 hit points now, which is great. Actually, that must have been there last time we went to town, because we've got the hit points now. And, oh, Barrier Spell. Barrier Spell increases defense for the entire party by 10, and it stacks. You can keep spamming it, which is a really, really handy ability for some fights. Really big fan of that. 10 defense is quite a bit, because if you take a look at our characters here, you can see they've got 11 defense, 12, see, uh, no, 1 defense over here. So, yeah, still still developing a little bit slowly, but it's not too shabby. A little bit more money. I'd be nice if I could maybe work my way up to 1 plus agility potion for my human. Bring her from 8 to a 10, which would actually be pretty sizable at this point in the game. So, we just need a little bit more gold for that. Oh, two lizards! Two lizards. The ESP ability is interesting in that it does literally nothing, apparently. Apparently it's supposed to do something like, um, effectively count like a shield. Uh, shields are pretty shitty in this game anyway. Like, you use that instead of an attack, and then it reduces the damage from the next attack, which, I mean, I guess you can do sort of a tanky thing. Uh, characters at the front of your party are more likely to get attacked, which is why we have Wake Up there with more hit points and the maximum armor, for example. But there's a chance that anyone can get hit at any point. But you could do something with shields, but it's kind of, I don't know. I just prefer killing things faster. That being said, I do like the barrier spell. Because improving the stats of the entire party is good, and the fact that it stacks is quite nice. So that's quite a bit of gold. We need 300 for the potion. Actually, how's our health? Okay, it's fine. No one's on the, the cusp of dying here. So we'll be we'll be heading into the bandit cave shortly. I just want to get a scooch more. A scooch more. By doing this, we do level up our, our mutants, which is good. And then, yeah. I'll just wait until I've got 300 plus enough for the, the inn. So probably something like 350. And the monsters give us 40 gold as a base at this level. It's nice when you get the fights with more than one, because when we got the, uh, the two lizards there, we got 80 gold. These guys, these Asigari, are pretty squishy. They can do, they can sometimes, I think, do crits or something, I don't remember, but yeah, they go down really fast. The lizards are probably the most annoying ones at this point. We may need, uh, I think I've got, what, a couple more rapiers in my inventory right now. I may want to consider um, getting a little bit more. And the other thing you can do when you're in a dungeon, you'll notice that your monster doesn't have a lot of uses of his ability. Later monsters do have a lot more uses, which offsets that, but early on, um, you're really sort of incentivized to eat meat as often as possible, even if it's not going to lead to a helpful mutation, just with the purpose of becoming a new monster, and, um, what am I looking for? Gold. Oh, that's, that's enough. I'm becoming a new monster so that you can get a new set of abilities refreshed. Alright, we're gonna dodge all these people. Uh, we're gonna go here to the potion vendor. We're gonna buy one agility potion. Thank you very much. And we're gonna use that. Agility. And only the human can use the agility potion, so we're gonna do that. We do have a couple of extra rapiers. And we've got the extra one on our, on our human as well. So that means we've got a second rapier for everyone, which is pretty good. So you can see here, agility. Oh, 11, actually. I think I'd forgotten what she started with. So, okay, let's go ahead. We'll give it a, a little quick save here. And let's go into the cave. We may still run out before we actually fight the, the, the bandit boss. Actually, because of reasons. So these are NPCs. If we go and bump into those, we will start a fight. So we're just going to try to avoid them in the interest of time and saving a little bit more hit points for the boss fight. So the NPC is actually uh, a pea frog. He's a poison frog. So if we um, if we hit him with melee, we actually will take some damage. Um, well, we'll become poisoned and take damage every round. So it actually might not have been a bad idea to grab some range attack for this. Especially since I think the base damage of the bows would actually be quite good. Ooh, 24 damage. Very nice. go 40 GP so we got to go through here and I don't think there's any random encounters in this area I might be wrong and then we'll meet the bandit king hello who said you could enter I did forget about the girl no way and then we fight oh such brilliant storytelling 
ESP is still bad. We could consider lowering the strength of this boss, actually, or even burying our party to give ourselves some extra defenses. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and bury her one time. Hopefully it uses early. There it is. I don't think different attacks have different initiative. I think higher agility improves your initiative, but I'm not positive. So there you go. You can see Wake is going to get poisoned. In fact, the P Frog is not going to do anything in the first round. Except poison all our people from the melee. That actually saves Ice a little bit of damage. Ooh, five damage is a lot. Um, it's going to save Ice a little bit of damage because Ice didn't actually attack. But Ice is going to start attacking now, and it should be fine. And yeah, I believe that um, the zombie is immune to poison, which is kind of handy. And you see there's no more of the reflective damage here because the P-Frog is actually going to attack someone now. Probably won't do much damage, yeah, and especially if you attack Wake, who's got very high defense. Oh, and someone um, neutralized their own poison, which is really handy. Alright, I think we're going to have this one in the bag with no problems whatsoever. Oh, he's being poisoned again. 21 damage. Defeated. Excellent. Poison does not persist between attacks. Meat of a pea frog. So, because pea frog is, well, level 2, it doesn't actually matter because I'm already a level 2 thing. What would this lead me to? This would lead me to an albatross, which is basically a level 1 monster. So, nope, I'm going to avoid that. Spare me! Should have said that before. It's like, <laughs> we're not very nice people, by the way. Uh, a lot of people try to surrender th to us during over the course of the game, and we more or less just kill them all because that's where we were all went a little too far, not optimizing those frames. But I was also just checking OBS to make sure that the recording was still okay. I also apologize in advance if the mouse ends up getting in the way at some point. Um, I'll try to remember to move it out. Zombie! Still have ESP power, that's really annoying. So the powers the mutants develop is random and they will get replaced over time. You'll get like a power you really like and then a couple fights later, it'll be gone and get replaced by something that is stupid. Zombie meat I don't think is what we're looking for at all yet. It would lead to nothing, no change whatsoever. So we're gonna cancel. I mean, I could literally eat it, but nothing, nothing would happen as a result. All right, so what we're gonna do is go back, talk to the girl. I think we have to do it. I'm actually not 100% sure, but I, I assume we have to go back and talk to the girl. In any case, I want to pop in the inn here and, and heal myself before we go back in the wilderness. We're actually pretty good on hit points, but let's just make sure. How are we on money? Oh, we're just short of um, another agility potion, which is a shame. I could get more hit point potion, but right now our hit points are good, and I'd rather get more agility just to be able to power through these opponents. Thank you very much. You've made me happy. There we go. I don't think we have to talk to her again, but it doesn't take very much time. So... What we do have to do, though, is go and talk to King Armor. And also get some random encounters along the way. Still have shitty ASP. Wake attacks the zombie. Ice attacks the zombie. And Eero attacks with chill. Hey, one round kill. Our damage is getting a little bit better. And again, the, zo uh, the uh, mutants over time will get... Uh, we'll do a lot more damage as their agility keeps increasing. But if we can keep feeding the human um, agility potions, our human may actually consistently stay ahead in the damage curve. Meanwhile, the monster is not going to do too well, but they can make up for it by having some pretty quirky things, not to mention some resistances, although they also get vulnerabilities. So, most monsters have vulnerabilities to something. Alright, into the castle again. And what's cool about this is the armor we're going to get, in fact, all three pieces that we're going to collect over the course of this world here, is actually something we can equip onto our characters. We'll have to get rid of it to, to finish the world, but there we go. So, hello, thank you, we are glad we could help, but we are we still entitled to reward? Hmm, what do you desire? Well, we would like the armor. I see, you get the king armor. And she says thank you. Um, so, you know, that's very nice of us. Um, we basically, like, blackmail and force and, and kill people, and then, you know, what do we take? Well, the one thing you're named for, that's what I would like. So, we're going to wear the king armor on ice here, giving 20 defense, which is actually pretty huge. And probably would make more sense on a, um, you know, on our frontline person, but that's okay. Oh, I made a wrong turn here. I thought I was at a different door already. There's a shortcut out of king armor's castle, which involves going left here and then up here. There we go. So, next up, we still can't do the King of Shield, because he's still just going to tell us to shoe. And it's quite funny, you can go there and his steward tells you to shoe, but it's kind of annoying to go in there and his guards are a pain in the butt, so we're just going to skip all that. There's literally nothing we can do in that, in that castle. And this is actually one that when I was a kid, I did not realize there was a path here forever. It was really hard to see on those dim 
original Game Boy screens. We've got a lizard. Hello, lizard. I'm gonna beat you up. Oh, one of our characters got some more hit points. I think there's a max of 47 there now. Meat of a lizard. Is that what we want? I No, it, it isn't. Um, we actually would very much like an albatross. And this would actually turn us into an albatross, which makes sense. Of course, I just checked the P-Frog, which is in the same group as lizards, so the mutation would be the same. So, what happens is each monster type belongs to a certain group. And your current group, plus the monster that you're eating's group, determines what group of or monster type you're going to turn into. And then the highest of your level versus their level, this is what I want to have drop meat, um, the highest of your level versus their level, whichever is higher, determines the sort of the level of monster that you're going to turn into. Uh, so there you go. And I'm pretty sure I've got it right. I'm just going to go off memory. But I'm pretty sure if we eat that, we will turn into an Oni, which is a level two um, sort of orc category type monster. And the reason I'm doing that particular style is because in the first world, it's actually quite hard to level up. And so this is, um, there's a, a bit of a route that makes it a little easier if you just follow that pattern. But in the other worlds, I don't have a planned out route. I'm just going to use my, my little handy dandy web tool to confirm that whatever I'm about to eat isn't going to make me become smaller or weaker. We've got two lizards here, so we're going to have to kill two in a row. Oh, we got double barrier. Well, it does give us more charges, which is nice, but it's not going to help us for this fight. So you can see here, this is obviously quite a bit more of a powerful character. 60 hit points. He's got two different attacks. Nail, which does some damage, and Horn that does more, but has fewer charges. I'll use some of that right away, because we do have two lizards to get through over here. And they're pretty well armored. 34 damage on that Horn. It'd be nice if you could choose the attack order here. And it is, it is semi-random, and I think it's based partially on stats. Uh, I'm going to switch the nail for the last one, just to avoid using too many more horn attacks. Defeated! We found meat of lizard, so currently, currently we're an Oni. And if we were to eat lizard meat, we would become a skeleton, which is a rank 1 monster. So, no, we don't want to do that. At 80 gold. So over here, we don't want to go through this staircase. We want to go through the bottom staircase. Top staircase just puts you in an area where you can't do anything. And this is our first fight with two different monster types at the same time. Um, I don't know, we'll... Oh, we got stench over here too. I'm trying to decide if I want to divide up my attacks. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put... Um, I think if I put two, a stronger and a weaker attack on each one, I think we can wipe this in one round. It sucks if they both stay standing, but I think this might work. Ice is going to attack with a rapier over there. Wake, who should be more powerful. Oh, only did 8 damage on the fly. Really? Maybe I was wrong about that. Oh, no, it worked. And Ira's going to horn there for 19 and defeat that. Wonderful. Almost like I knew what I was doing, but not really. Uh, oh, there's a random encounter again. Oh, four Karate Cut. These guys can do a shit ton of damage, and we still don't have any AoE damage. But what we do have... We could stench, and stench stenches the entire group. The problem is, I don't know if their damage is actually based on strength or not. And so, I'm actually... Because if it's like the martial art attacks, it's not based on strength. It might be worth doing some barriers. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and do that. 40 damage. One shot, one kill? No, it's not. Wow. Alright. At least we got our defense up before they attacked. This, please, finish one off. Oh my god, it didn't. Okay, it's going to take like 60 damage to do one. I think I might stack... Eh, Alright, that's not much damage, luckily. The barrier probably helped a lot. Okay, just just go for damage then now. I think we're going to be okay. Um, yeah, use some more horn charges. We've got to save a couple for the final boss. Who's probably not going to be as hard as this particular encounter here. We will, on the, on the bright side, get a lot of gold for this, but... Good thing they don't do a lot of damage, and... Yeah... We'll have to reorganize our, our party as well to put our highest hit point people a little closer to the front. Die? Nope. Then we'll use the horn so there'll be wicked overkill there, which is a little bit upsetting. Because I think we could have done that a little bit better. And just switch the nail for the last one, because it should die this round no matter what. Excellent. 160 hit points. Alright, so we don't have any potions, which is too bad. But I can go and maybe swap like that. Again, the people closest to the front are more likely to get attacked. So we'll do a save just in case. King Sword! You must defeat me first if you want my sword. Okay, we will do that. Hello, King Sword. And Horn, and... 
I think we'll just, just go for damage is going to be okay here. 32 damage! Jesus Christ. Okay, I may may have wanted to have barriered and start stacking that stuff. Question is, are we going to kill him in one more round or not? Alright, let me barrier. Barriers tend to go off pretty quick. Hell, even Stench might have been a good idea. If he attacks with strength, then he may. Right, at least we haven't had any death, but... Oh, that's not a whole lot of damage being applied there. Yes! The Horn to the Crotch wins the day. 240 damage. You get King Sword. He is dead. It's not very nice. Like, we actually just killed that dude. Now, I don't like the fact that we're going to be running through here with so few hit points. We're going to put Eero in the front. And I guess Ice in front of Wake. Actually, no, hold on. Wake still has much, much better armor. Ah, that's not true, though. Ice had, does have the King armor. Oh, we'll just go like this. We'll be a furry for a little while. Oh, I didn't mean I walked into the guard, I think. I'm actually not 100% sure if I did, because I'm not sure that the guards are were-rats. Were-rats are pretty squishy, though, so I think this should be fine. Wow, that horn damage. That is really good. All right, so we're still an Oni. Do we want to become a were-rat? Or if we eat the were-rat, oh, nothing will happen at all. Okay, so we won't do that. I know that we can... Um, there's a couple more monsters we could eat on this um, this continent in the right order that would result in us becoming a werewolf, which is quite nice. But I think we need two more transformations for that, and I don't remember what those monsters were. Right now, I'm quite happy. Ha bring, getting up to the Oni stage is... This is all of a sudden a pretty competent monster for the first world. And we are... Well, we're probably about, not quite two-thirds of the way through, but we're f nearly two-thirds of the way through the first world. We have one more king to take care of, and then there's uh, one more thing to deal with that. And then we'll have to decide what we're going to do with our money, and if we're going to farm anything in the first world before we continue to world number two. Oh my god! This is actually a little bit annoying, especially since we're not very, very high um, on hit points. Let me walk two steps before the next encounter. At least we're one-shotting them. Uh, and I think I'd, com I'd, I'd confirm that I didn't want to be a zombie. This would send me back to being an Obake, which I don't want to do. Man, am I happy I've got that app. Um, I mean, it's fun to expect. Oh, I gotta go down anyway. Jesus. Um, it is fun to, you know, just eat random meat and see what happens and try to figure out if there's a pattern or whatever, but it's kind of inscrutable. Uh, Khan, our mutant, is doing more damage than Wake, our human, so obviously they have... Oh, God damn it. I'm taking a terrible path. Um, they have developed a lot more agility over the course of the last few fights than our human did. Okay, at least you are really squishy. We've got a few more charges. Oh, we got Thunder, finally! So, Thunder, Cold, and Flame? I don't remember what the names are. All three of those attacks attack an entire stack of monsters, dealing damage to each one in there. Which is really nice. Also, it replenishes at an inn, so it's free. Although, they, they always have a cap of 10 charges. Um, and some monsters are immune to certain elements. We'll actually see that quite a bit on the next world, which is a water world. And all the fish and things are immune to fire effects. So I'm just going to go to the town here and try to heal up. Kill a lizard. I don't think I'm going to worry about any, eating any more meat until we get out of this world. It'll save me time from looking it up. Alright, let's go here. Rest at the... Oh, that, oh, it is the inn. thought that was the red spot, but no, that's on the right. So it's going to cost 209 gold to max it out. But if we take a look over here, we've got some pretty crazy stats. In fact, Ice has got the biggest, the best stats and one of the best defenses for now, which is great. But I'm still going to put Wake at the front. And we'll do that. And actually, Eero, see, again, look, like, the monster tends to, right now is doing good damage. That horn, is, in particular, is very good. But in a lot of ways, tends to lag behind. But it is cool. Let's go to the item shop over here. So the bows, again, that's that ranged attack. It does fixed damage, but we don't have to worry about that. We're still good on extra rapiers. Um, and I don't think I need any more defensive items. I'm a little bit worried about the end, um scene boss. I might actually go back to the other place and buy some um, buy some gold armor. Because, yeah, that's actually a really good idea. So I'm going to save the cash. I'm going to go ahead and use the agility on Wake over here. Oh yeah, and we do have the King Sword. I believe that the King Sword is... Yeah, it's a strength-based item. It'll probably still do decent damage, but 
I think we'll actually do surprisingly better by sticking to the rapier. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put a cut in here. We'll be back uh, in, well, from my point of view, in just a minute with another episode of this Let's Play of The Final Fantasy Legend. Thanks for watching, folks. See you next time.